how to have this prayer effectively. First, we need to know the scripture well. We need to know the words well. And praying in keeping the word of the God. So when we pray, we also need to know the words, the verses properly. And the second thing, we have to be very specific. Whenever we pray, we cannot pray like uh, we pray for this, we pray for that, we pray for him, we pray for him, pray for him what? Right? We have to be very, very specific, dealing directly with the particular issues, asking for specific results. And the third thing, it always involves the faith, the absolute faith in God's ability, his timing, his wisdom, and the trust we have in him. So these three things, we have to be always have it. Knowing the words, knowing the right words, and pray, pray to God. That is claiming his promises. You say the word, claim his promise, you pray to him. And then you ask for specific things and you expect specific results. And then whenever you do this, you have the absolute faith in him. You trust in him, God's ability, his timing, everything. All the three things are very, very important. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. Wait for the Lord. Let us patiently endure things and he will lead us through. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, as we share the words of you, open up our hearts so that your words will be implanted deep in our hearts, Lord. Help us to absorb that. Help us to reflect that. Help us be light and salt. You speak, we hear. Be with us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we will continue James as we are almost in the end of this book. We are looking into this section where we are looking at patience through prayer. Today we will be looking into patience through suffering. A car without fuel doesn't make any sense. It's almost the same when we don't have any prayer life. The effective prayer, it moves the heart. What we need to do is like when we pray, it moves the heart of our God. But still, most of the believers, we move away from praying. When I started this, when I was talking about the introductory part, if you could recollect, I would have told that this author, James, is the brother of Christ. And historians have noted his name. He has got a nickname called Camel Knees. He was a person who spent most of his time in knees in prayer. So his knees became so hardened and calloused like a camel's knee. So that was the reason he was nicknamed as Camel Knees James. So if, if a person like James who has spent more time with prayer we will not be surprised that when we started this book, he wrote, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask to God who gives to all generously and without reproach and it will be given to him. This is a verse he started in the first chapter and fifth verse. And he continues the emphasis of prayer midway. In the fourth chapter, he says, you do not have because you do not ask. Ask is the prayer. That's what he's uh, mentioning. And he is building that 
prayer emphasis of prayer continuously and now we are in the fag end of the end of this chapter is still continuing with the emphasis of prayer in 7 to 12 verses of the fifth chapter he was answering the question how to respond to suffering through patience here in 13 to 18 verses whatever we are going to look today now developing an idea we how we are to conduct ourselves with patience as we wait for the lord's return see the true faith exhibited through prayer true faith exhibited through patience it exposed itself in prayer if we face any obstacle whether it be sickness or sin the correct response is prayer prayer not only reflects an attitude of our genuine faith it also reveals the patient endurance the patient endurance as we rely on him when we have that patient endurance we wait for his timing and also for his promises to be fulfilled according to his time so the most important aspect here is prayer that's what we read in proverbs 3 5 to 6 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding so that is that is the thing like we need to trust him at the same time fervently pray to him when we look into these verses this gives us an emphasis of how or why and what we need to pray to him we will look into these verses and then we, when we look into each verse in detail then you will understand what james is trying to teach us so for today's reading it will be from james chapter 5 verses 13 to 18 so i'll be reading from niv is anyone among you in trouble let them pray is anyone happy let them sing songs of praise is anyone among you sick let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well the lord will raise them up if they have sinned they will be forgiven therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective elijah was a human being even as we are prayed earnest that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for 3 and a half years again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops so we will now look into each and every verse in detail so we will understand the context of all these verses so we'll begin with the first verse whatever we read um, verse 13 is anyone among you in trouble let them pray is anyone happy let them sing sing songs of praise see like if you look into this verse james is referring to end of the spectrum suffering and cheerfulness see the very first question is anyone among you in trouble and then he asks another question is anyone happy right this is two extreme spectrums suffering and cheerfulness this suffering is an affliction right it is an affliction it could be either a physical or mental emotional or spiritual or any other issues like whatever we are suffering whatever afflictions we are having you know what the response he wants we must pray prayer is the only solution to all the problems he says what everything whatever we do it must start right but again we have to remember that it doesn't mean that god would immediately remove all the afflictions or he will end all the affliction we have to keep that in mind when james says like we have to pray 
in all situation in every circumstances especially when we are going through sickness or trials or affliction god never ever promised to bring instant relief there is no place in the bible that god has promised instant relief from any of the afflictions but to provide us the strength and the patience to endure all the affliction if you look into isaiah chapter 43 you all know these verses by heart do not fear for i have redeemed you i have summoned you by my name when you pass through the waters i will be with you when you walk through the rivers they will not sweep you when you walk through the fire they will not burn you up see god is leading us through difficulties and he is leading us through it we also uh, read in psalms god never promised us that he will bypass that bad walk right prayer doesn't express faith in god to deliver us from the trials but it is through the trials when we are afflicted it's time to pray see even in the beginning of this book in james chapter 1 when you look into these beginning verses what does james say consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters whenever you face trials of many kind because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete so that is the same emphasis he is bringing in in the end of this book even if you look into romans chapter 5 3 and 4 verses you will read not only so but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance perseverance character and character hope so the final message here is like even though we go through all these trials and tribulations let us be patient and let us have that perseverance and even during that time let us pray to god let us pray to god again emphasis in the last message i did talk about joseph and daniel they have undergone lot of trials but they were totally committed to god and they were totally patient and they persevered through their sufferings the den was always dark and fiery with all the lions but he had that endurance he had to persevere and look at joseph who has got more chapters written in the bible for his suffering he endured through that and he had the patience the same thing we need endurance it would say is any one among you suffering then he must pray and if any one is cheerful he must sing praise him so that is the other end of the spectrum the response to singing praises to god it's another form of prayer whenever we go to church we try to sing praise him worship him thank him honor him when we honor him and we thank him we acknowledge what he has done so two things honor him for who he is and acknowledge what he has done for us so in all the circumstances either be good or bad the right response pray constantly first thessalonians chapter 5 16 to 18 rejoice always pray continuously give thanks in all circumstances in vision 618 it says pray in the spirit on all occasions roman 12 12 it says joyful in hope patient in affliction faithful in prayer 14 and 15 verses it says is any one among you sick then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him anoint him with oil in the name of the lord the james is slowly moving towards affliction suffering so right now James is also emphasizing the same thing when any of us is sick prescribes three things call for the spiritual leaders of the church so the second thing he prescribes is the specific response by the elders what are they supposed to do they are supposed to pray and anoint oil is used for two reasons one as either ceremonial occasions or 
it is for medicine or for hygienic purposes david was anointed with the oil the other side of it when it is for medicinal and hygienic purposes we see the good samaritan so oil here it means for soothing and for protection this oil is for physical comfort and it is promoted for healing purposes oil is not only for healing it is also for anointing so here in this context it is going to be more healing purpose third one leave the result to the god the healing is by god restoration raising up and forgiveness is been pointing and now he is focusing on we all have known we have to confess our sins to god but here we have to confess our sins to one another having some bitterness that is the time to confess reach out to the other person talk and say that you have wronged so the bitterness stress that is within us it it brings about a depression and the effective prayer of a righteous person can accomplish much the fourth area when we are afflicted with the trouble we should pray now coming to the 17th and 18th verse he concludes how we have to pray specifically with specific request we are created in the image of god our actions our attitudes our thoughts everything should reflect christ prayer is an energized ingredient right that turns ordinary words into powerful words to god so before we close here i want to give you like just three points how to have this prayer effectively first we need to know the scripture well we need to know the words well and praying in keeping the word of the god so when we pray we also need to know the words the verses properly and the second thing we have to be very specific whenever we pray we cannot pray like we pray for this we pray for that we pray for him we pray for we pray for him what right we have to be very very specific dealing directly with the particular issues asking for specific results and the third thing it always involves the faith the absolute faith in god's ability his timing his wisdom and the trust we have in him so these three things we have to be always have it knowing the words knowing the right words and pray pray to god that is claiming his promises you say the word you claim his promise you pray to him and then you ask for specific things and you expect specific results and then whenever you do this you have the absolute faith in him you trust in him god's ability his timing everything all the three things are very very important and finally we look into james is referring elijah in verses 17 to 18 he reminds that elijah was a person like us like us in the sense elijah was a person who was sinful he was inconsistent he was imperfect but he had all the gifts from god because when you look into these verses and when you look into what elijah did he had the perfection and he had a specific petitions that's what i told you the second point whenever we ask anything to god we have to be very very specific in asking 
and then looking for a specific result elijah did the same thing when he prayed to stop and to start the rain it did happen so elijah was a righteous person and he knew what to pray for when to pray for and he did have the discernment of god that is the main emphasis james is giving here god will always listen to our prayers and answer our prayers so based on all these things james is developing this particular character that we need to have how to pray how to respond during this difficult times of with patience and endurance and then how to reach to god in prayer so i will finally conclude by giving you just three points three to four points how we need to apply this this prayer prayer it should be always continuous in all circumstances in all timings in all situation we need to be prayerful in all circumstances there will not be any moment we do not want to reach out to god every single thing we do even a short prayer just a word to god thank you for doing this thank you for leading us through thank you for doing that whatever we do we just thank him and ask him whether we want to do it lord if it is your will whenever we want to do certain things lord if i do this will it glorify your name everything we do whatever we do every other thing we do with the prayer you will surely see the blessings and you will surely see how god is glorified and the second point here is prayer is designed for every part of our life when i say like prayer is designed for every part of our life prayer shouldn't be like a fire extinguisher we just take the fire extinguisher only when there is fire no prayer shouldn't be like this it should be in every part of the life as i told you like whenever things are good pray to him things are bad pray to him when we are sick pray to him when we have fear pray to him when we are happy pray to him when there is gain pray to him whenever there is loss pray to him every time pray to him and the third point is prayer is not a substitute for responsibility what do i mean by this like when i say like substitute for responsibility is if i want to give an example we don't want to pray to be healed when we are sick but still do not want to take any doctor's advice uh another example i could give you is uh way back like when we were in school or in college right like we should have seen people like who have not been uh, been christians or believers they will not study for the exams but they will just pray god like let me pass this exam but they will not study that is that is the thing like you just pray and you sit there sitting quietly not doing anything god is not going to answer those kinds of prayers right there should be action and prayer that's the point here like substitute for responsibility and finally prayer is not for the perfect but for the imperfect that's the reason james is ending this book chapter by saying like elijah was a righteous person and by nature he was like us and he, we need we need not be like uh, uh, elijah like a prophet you need not say like oh elijah was a prophet no we are not prophets and we are not apostles like paul but still when we have the righteous heart to stand before god confess all of our sins and then when we pray fervently god is going to answer our prayers see to be um if you turn to first john first chapter 1 to 5 if we claim that we walk with god 
and we live a sinful life in darkness we are not in the truth and if we claim that we are without sin we are deceiving ourselves and we if we say that we have not sinned at all then we make god a liar if you look down the verses it says like he jesus christ he is the light and if we walk in that light he is ready to accept our sins and purify us right like in in ninth word ninth verse i think like he says like if we confess our sins he is ready to forgive us we cannot claim that we are without sin and we have not sinned though we have been accepted by christ cleansed from all our sinful habits we are saints cleansed by god but still sinful so let us not claim ourselves to be self righteous that is the biggest sin we will be doing so wait for the lord be strong take heart wait for the lord let us patiently endure things and he will lead us through almighty god thank you for your wonderful words lord you give us the patience to go through all the tra- suffering and the trials you give us the patience lord you fill us with your wisdom and your knowledge lord help us to live a life that is always pleasing to you let this life whatever we live bear fruit lord you fill us with your knowledge you give us with your mighty powers that we have that endurance and patience and when you put us into trust lord let us come forth even better than gold you are refining us lord thank you for that let us endure and let us have that patience lord our present suffering has got nothing to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us lord thank you for all the things you have done us either through good times or bad times you have got wonderful promises to us lord you have always said that you will never leave us nor forsake us you have told that we have been redeemed you have promised that you will strengthen us uphold us yes lord when you make us walk through the rivers through the waters they are not going to sweep us lord the fire is not going to burn us you are going to be with us lord when shadrach meshach and abednego were thrown into the fire you were with them thank you lord thank you for your wonderful promises whatever the afflictions the pains we are undergoing we know that you will restore our lives back again you will lift up us from the depths of this earth and restore us double portion this is your promise from psalms 71 lord we claim those promises and we pray those promises to you lord whatever difficulty we are going through as personal whatever personal afflictions we are going through as families you lift up you give us your right hand you give us your promises your words 
help us not to deviate from anything else, Lord. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to pray to you, to reach out to you, Lord. You are not a distant God. You are always with us, within us, living in us, living through us, Lord. Thank you for all your promises. Thank you for giving us this message. Ribbit this message deep in our hearts so that we will not deviate from that. Help us to absorb whatever you have taught us. Help us to apply whatever you have taught us. Help us to teach this to our family members, to our children, to whoever we are meeting in our workplaces. Let us always spread your words of love and compassion. Thank you for this wonderful time you have given us and teaching us your words. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.